Hello and welcome to this edition of Viewpoint. Today we sit down with the Executive Director of the Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance, Greg Sandana. Greg, thank you so much for coming to Viewpoint. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. I love to start out every interview with my favorite question, what's your union story? How did you end up being part of the labor movement? So I actually grew up in a union household in South Sacramento, um, California. My dad was a member of AFSME, Local 3299. He was a mechanic who worked on shuttles and buses. And, you know, to be honest, growing up, I heard a lot of stories about unions and mostly actually uh, not so positive stories about his experience. And as I kind of grew older and um, went into education and particularly college, um, I actually made, made it full circle and actually ended up interning for the same union that represented my dad. Um, and it was that moment where I realized if my dad had um, a better connection to an understanding of what the union was and what the benefits it had, it would, uh, he would have had a different experience. And so that actually is what grounds my work at Apollo is saying, what can I do better to make sure that people like my dad can have better experiences in the labor movement and feel a part of, um, of, of, of a larger movement for social and economic justice? Why do you think you got it? But there's so many people out there, kind of like your dad, who, who don't jump on board. I think it's a, a variety of reasons. One, I think um, I had the opportunity to be able to be at an institution that actually had labor and workplace studies. Um, so it, it was actually about grounding us in the history of the labor movement, the history of collective power, and the history of, of of economic justice, and I think that was one piece of it. I think another piece of it was that while my dad had not, not a positive experience, he instilled in me a lot of values that he maybe didn't understand came from the experience he had in the workplace. And so he, for him, when, as, as he was raising me and my sister, and as, as we are part of the household, I think he said, you know, um, it's important for us to have equal opportunity. It's important for us to have a fair chance. It's important for us to, to raise our voices. And I, I, I started to realize and understand that that was the connection and understanding to the labor movement. And that was the importance of why he was a part of it and what was able to happen because he was a part of it. I, I love everyone's story about how we got involved because nobody as a young child said to themselves, you know what, I want to be part of the labor movement. But once we stuck our big toe in the pool, it's over. <laughs> You're in it for life. Do you feel the same way? I absolutely do. I actually feel like not only am I in it for life, but I want to help shape and continue to grow the labor movement and make sure that as many people as possible can be a part of it. Tell me a little bit about your organization. It was founded in 1992, am I correct? Correct. Okay. So APALA, or otherwise known as the Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance, is the first and only national organization of Asian American and Pacific Islander workers, many who are union members, um, advancing worker, immigrant, and civil rights. Why was there a need for such a group? I, we, we love to do this. We love to have all these constituency groups, but sometimes I feel like our, our differences are the same as our similarities. Right. You know, so we were founded because there was an understanding that um, there was a growing number of Asian American Pacific Islander workers, um, both in unions and, 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 in this, and more broadly in the country and in, in terms of the demographics, and that there was a growing need to better engage um, and in, involve the community. And many people, many of our founders came together and said, you know, they had caucuses in maybe different parts of the country, but said, you know, it's important for us to come together and it's important for us to demand um, a, a space, a seat at the table, but also for us to really think strategically and thoughtfully about how do we help not only push the labor movement, but also make sure that our community feels a part of it so that we can help grow it as well. Asian Pacific Americans, tell me who's part of that community, which nationalities are, I mean, everyone can be involved, but which nationalities is that specifically encompass? Yeah, so there's actually a, a quite a few nationalities, and, and I think that's one thing that's very interesting for at least me, or as, as I've been doing a lot more work within the Asian American Pacific Islander community, is that there are literally hundreds of countries, <laughs> languages, and so it's a very diverse uh, grouping of folks. And so one thing that I like to tell people is that, you know, we are the fastest growing in the country, racial group in the country. Um, our numbers are, are now about um, 18 million, and we like to say 18 million and rising. Um, and we're in a, I think we're in a unique place because, because we're so diverse and because there are a variety of kind of cultures and, 
um, different types of diversity within the community. It also allows us, um, I think anyways, to be able to think more broadly about how we actually engage with other communities, other communities of color, the, the broader labor movement, um, and in a way that um, is very collective and very familial and very forward thinking. You know, when I was doing research for this interview, I started running across some of these great API heroes mm. that kind of set the course. Who are some of your favorites? Who are those people that inspire you from your community? Absolutely. So the, the two people that, I, that come to my mind right away um, uh, are Philip Veracruz and Larry Itliong. Um, and they're two Filipino Americans who are actually very integral to the Delano grape strike, which actually led to the creation of the United Farm Workers. And so not many people know, so many people know who Cesar Chavez is, many people know who Dolores Huerta is, and they were very integral to the movement. But not many people know about what we call, who we call the Manongs, the forgotten Manongs. Um, and, and so I, I, I raise their voices and raise their names because um, learning more about them and hearing about the amazing organizing they did and the amazing ability they, uh, to bring together people who come from different countries with different languages, but, but knew they were united in their fight against um, exploitation and their fight against um, uh, corporate greed, if you will. Um, and it's a story that I want to make sure people understand because it's an important part about our history as a movement, but also our history as a people in the U.S. So as the executive director, is that kind of your job is to make sure that those stories and the stories of current members kind of gets out there and that we their voice is heard? Absolutely. That's an integral part of my job. And I think one thing that I, I'm really proud about Apollo is that it's the true intergenerational spirit of it. Um, you know, generations of people are involved in the organization and we, I like uh, we were founded in 1992, and we have many founding members who are still engaged now, but we also have been able to help um, bring in uh, um, generations of new um, and young activists and organizers into the movement um, that has really allowed for us to think very strategically and unique uh, uniquely and differently about actually how we are building this movement, how we are expanding the movement. I think it's so important, at least I've found it's very important to have those different generations working together instead of against each other. I think in the past we, we, we had a, a poor division of church and state, so to say. But nowadays I, I think it's really important that if you're six or 60, we're all working towards the same goal. Absolutely. And I think that there's also, you know, because we're in a unique political time, now more than ever, the, the intergenerational spirit is needed because you know, we, it's important for us to understand the history and the context for how people like me could even be where I'm at now in terms of the, our ancestors and, our, and folks who have been able to really build and, and, and blaze a trail before us, but also to kind of match that with the energy and the innovation of, of a, a new generation who also has access to a different set of tools that you know, folks in the past haven't had access to. And so how do we kind of take what I say, this new alignment of stars and really leverage this current political moment and this fertile ground for organizing? Um, and, and that's the question I think that we need to be really thinking about in this moment. Besides politics, what's kind of next for your group? I mean, on, I would love to say that we can all just focus on one race at a time, but it doesn't happen that way. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, so for Apollo, we've actually done a lot around racial justice. And for us, that means a lot of different things. One, it means um, we, something we call exposing the school to prison to deportation pipeline. How are we connecting um, mass incarceration to mass deportations? How are we connecting that to the lack of quality public school education and a lack of, of fair wages and a voice on the job for workers? And how do we connect that to kind of the, this globalization and this um, understanding of trade deals, right? And so um, for us, connecting those dots and kind of showing the impacts to API communities and communities of color is really important. And also building across communities is also important in terms of how we actually are coming up with solutions um, and, and policy uh, policies that actually will help us kind of impact or, or change um, the current set, uh, situations. You seem very excited about the future. It shows through in, in what you're saying and when you're talking about this group. You've got a lot on your plate though. Can you do it? <laughs> Uh, there is a lot on our plate, um, but I think not only can we do it, but I think we will do it and do it with enthusiasm and do it with a sense of commitment that I 
think that is very different than any other time in, in history. Um, I, like, like I mentioned before, I do feel like we are on the cusp of something really game-changing and truly revolutionary. And so um, our, our goal is to get as many folks engaged as possible. Um, our goal is to be able to empower as many people as possible to feel like they are part of um, Apollo, a part of the movement. And our goal is to, is to win and, get, uh, and, to get, and to fight for the liberation of all of us. Well, thank you so much for coming by Viewpoint. We hope we'll come back sometime. Absolutely. Thank you so much again for having me. That's it for this edition of Viewpoint. To get involved with Apollo, you can check out their website at www.apollonet.org. Thanks for watching.